Today we're testing the Hum C Ink battery, lithium iron phosphate 12 volt, and it's rated for 310 amp hours. And the price of this battery is ridiculous. It's $369. That's cheaper than watt cycle, that's cheaper than lead time, and it's even cheaper than eco-worthy, which is crazy. First, let's compare it to a watt cycle. These used to be the budget batteries, and now it's pretty expensive compared to the competition. This one is $500, and it's a smart battery, and they're having major issues with all of their smart batteries, just like everyone else, Lead Time, Redodo, and all of the others. I think they're all made by the same company, who knows, they won't admit anything to me. I question them over and over again. They have a software fix that's in beta right now, but it's not public. It seems to fix the issue, but I can't conclude that until we get more people testing it. This battery is considered dumb. There's no Bluetooth, there's no special smart cycling, nothing. It just works. Now, when I capacity tested these batteries, this one got 326 amp hours, and this one got 328, which is pretty surprising considering the difference in price. It almost seems like they're using the same cells. But look at how large this case is. This is a red flag. It's either filled with air or it has a ton of grade B cells and it matches this one. Who knows until we open it up. Next, these are rated for 200 amps, but they're very different when you test them. This one actually has overcurrent protection and this one does not. I put 500 amps on both batteries and the watt cycle tripped after three seconds. But this one pulled more current and it didn't trip for over two minutes. This is pretty dangerous. This is very similar to the EcoWorthy 280 amp hour battery. And for these, I recommend people putting a fuse on them. This is a good option. This attaches to the stud, so then you can connect it to your system safely. <laughs> Look at how much empty space this battery has. They could easily fit this into a smaller box. Ooh, there is a temperature sensor, and the main supply conductors are not soldered. This is actually looking pretty good. And it was actually glued to the cells. Usually it's not. So first we're charging with 10 amps, and we have some ice water. And it works, that was instant. Let's get deeper into this battery. I wanna see the cells. Wow. The overpressure relief valves are not obscured. We have screw terminals on the bus bars. We also have the lumps so they can expand and contract. Really solid main connections as well. This is a little small for 200 amps though. Technically with this type of insulation, it can handle it. And the screw terminal side has more conductors, which is nice but I would like to see bigger ones. But I don't like this balance cable. Look at how they're just glued down under this foam. This should be separated and it should be protected. Next, we actually have insulative material between the cells and they're strapped together with strapping and not with tape. So this is pretty nice. This at this price point is pretty good. But look at this BMS. There's only a small piece of foam Oh, and fiberboard, that's good, between the BMS and these cells. And this thing got really hot when I did my overcurrent protection test. And in my testing, this thing got really hot. The outside of the case hit 155 degrees because again, it has no overcurrent protection. It only has over temperature. And to trigger that, this thing has to get crazy hot which means the cells are getting crazy hot as well. It's nice that they have this foam and fiber board, but I'd like to see more and also over current protection that works. Now, usually at this price point, you're not gonna see screw terminals. Everything's gonna be soldered and glued together. So it's pretty nice to see this. And these are some nice crimps. So to summarize, they need less air in the case. There's lots of wasted space. Next, they need to protect the balance lead. And next, they need overcurrent protection on this BMS. If they fixed those things, we would have an incredible battery for the price. Now let's open up the watt cycle and see how it compares. Let's see if they're using the same cells. Now this is objectively better in every single way. And what are these cells that they're using? Let's go a little deeper. Why do they have to make these smart batteries? Why can't they just give us a simple battery that works? That thing's a little weak, it actually snapped off. I just broke it. That's not good. I mean, it's not the best build quality. <laughs> 
And these are epoxy. They're not even glued. I don't think I can get that off. So they used to advertise these as being Eve cells, but on this one, it says they're EV grade. And I've never seen these before, these expansion relief valves. And these ones, I don't know what these cells are at all, but even though they look very different, they test at almost the same capacity. And it doesn't show the capacity on the QR code. These QR codes are for internal use only, so you can't really conclude much from them. Oh, these ones show the capacity. It shows 1,004.8 watt hours on this one. If we divide that by the voltage nominal, we get 314 amp hours. So they actually label this as 310, but these cells are 314. That's why they pull the same capacity as these. That's actually a pleasant surprise from this company. Usually they do the opposite. Like I caught watt cycle putting 280 amp hour cells and then they advertised it for 300 amp hours. But this company is being honest. Watt cycle says 5,000 to 15,000 cycles. That is hard to believe. Now safe Safety-wise, I would prefer this. This build quality, the overcurrent protection working, is a lot safer. But I know some of you guys want the cheapest deal around, and if you add a fuse to this, it's pretty good, unless this balance cable shorts on something because they're rubbing up against each other. I would not use this in a high vibration mobile environment. And this is a new product, so we need to wait and see what people experience if they get dead on arrival units. But not bad for the price. I'm actually pretty impressed. And I really hope they fix the software on this watt cycle battery. What sucks though is when I found a problem, they didn't want to pay my video fee. And if you ever want to see my terms and conditions for these videos, I have it posted on the form and my entire business model. So please check it out if you want to know how I work with these companies. I don't sign any of their sponsorship contracts and that allows me to say whatever I want. And the companies don't seem to like that, unfortunately. They love me when I find good things, but the moment I find a bad thing, they hate me. So I hate to confuse you guys more, but we have more pros and cons. Every battery is different. There's no single best battery. I thought the epoch was until people started getting them bricked with over the air updates. So yeah, unfortunately, we'll just have to keep testing batteries until we find the best one. Also, these batteries and their manufacturers come and go. If you want to see what I currently recommend on my website, it is linked down below. My recommendations change all the time, and if people have problems with the battery that I'm currently recommending, I will remove it from the list, especially if they change the software or they change the hardware. But yeah, that's my current list of recommended products, so please check it out down below. I hope you liked the video. Lots to learn as always, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.